Hey everybody, it's the second episode of UIO, the new podcast for teenage girls. Hugs to everyone and thank you for joining UIO, the podcast for teenage girls. It is for you and about you inside out. I'm Sanja Lewis, your host. Today we're talking about your body the importance of exercising and eating right. I know, I know, been there, done that. These very two can often seem like the twin bugbears of teenage life. Well, I've got news for you. Exercise and nutrition are crucial to how you feel now and are vital to your long-term health. That can mean more energy and weight control right now while storing up good measure for the future, such as preventing unnecessary health problems like obesity. And that's not all. Discover more remarkable facts about a girl's growth and health between the ages of 12 and 18 and how to make sense of it all with the lovely Judith Rosinka. She's a personal trainer and nutrition advisor, health coach, and master's level strength and conditioning coach and founder of Move Pain Free. Judith deals with weight loss, muscle strengthening, offers dietary advice with a view to change mindsets permanently. No more yo-yo dieting, says Judith. Welcome, Judith. Thanks so much for joining me to talk about how important exercise and nutrition are to a girl's body. I'm not sure I understood this properly until I got involved with the exercise and nutrition of one of my nieces just before she became a teenager. At that time, I had started training with you and I was changing a lot myself. But for me, it wasn't terribly drastic. I've always managed to control my weight you know, pretty adequately, but admittedly, mm, not my health. But once I understood that it was not about being thin, but about being healthy, I got with the program and I set out to help my niece. Why should she have to wait until being 50-ish to really get this? And not only this, according to Healthy Women, an online resource, girls go f- grow faster during the teen years than they do at any other time in life, of course, except infancy. And without the proper nutrients, a girl stores up problems for tomorrow, such as osteoporosis and anemia. And furthermore, the amount of exercise a girl gets between the ages of 12 and 18 is a critical factor in preventing hip fractures after menopause. Okay, that's funny. I know no one is thinking about menopause in her teenage years, but oh my God, if only I'd known then what I know now. So let's start with nutrition. Sounds so very orthodox and boring sometimes, but it isn't, is it? Look at what the risks are if girls don't eat right, if they don't exercise. Judith, tell us a bit more about why it's important to eat healthily in the first place. Well, hello, Sonja, and hello, everybody. I'm really excited to be on you inside out. I could go on and on and on about uh, nutrition, but let me just uh, start here. Your nutritional needs at this stage are going to be heightened. Your growth and development is its highest since infancy. So clearly it means that you, your body will need more calories to stay alert, to be better at sports, to be better at school, to be able to keep up with all the changes that are happening in your life. And let's face it, those hormonal changes that are happening to you right now happen to all of us. We all have been there. So here are a couple of couple of tips from me. I just put it out there, and then hopefully, Sonja, you are going to ask me questions. Sure, sure, I will along, along these lines. <laughs> But uh, you might have heard it several times that we do need to eat regularly. We mustn't uh, skip breakfast. Really, breakfast is your most important meal. You set yourself up for the day. You cutting cravings if you're eating well. If you try to avoid sugary food in the morning. Remember, Sonja, how I was uh, telling you about cutting that croissant with, yes. uh, with the jam in the morning and yes. trying to replace it with wholesome food, Yes, which we hopefully will talk about anyway, what wholesome food is. Yes, we will. Um, and also, obviously, educating yourself. But most importantly, once you will hopefully pick up a couple of things from this interview, you will educate your parents or the people you're living with 
and that's important. let's hope let's hope that they're going to pick up on it as well and eventually if you pe- persistent enough they actually going to be on the same page with you this is fantastic because it does get into the questions about okay what is healthy you know what can our teen girls eat do they have to cut out pizza burgers and all those things mm-hmm. and you mentioned i want i want to pick up on your point about sugary things in the morning cereal has a lot of sugar and they're on the go so they're grabbing their cereal and so forth and so on the girls want to know well, what what can they eat Okay, so you would be surprised, all of you, to hear that actually you can keep your burgers and pizzas, but not all calories made equal and not all carbs made equal. Okay. So when it comes to food choices, so the best thing to cut out junk food or takeaway foods and trying to replace these with your homemade choices. Now, I also understand that many of you possibly aren't kitchen goddess and uh, you're not (laughs) spending hours in the kitchen. So obviously the the, uh, fact of the matter is that if you can buy and you can go to the aisles in in a supermarket where you can buy the raw materials or at least the beef burgers themselves, look at the, the backside, flip the package, look at the meat content of that burger okay. and if it's over 87 and more, then you have a, ch- a good chance that you're actually getting the meat oh, that cool. you, you were uh, planning to, to get from that meal. But also, um, uh, I think a, a good rule of thumb is, uh, at least in the UK, we're using the traffic light system. Mm-hmm. I uh, I tried to look it up online, whether in America, in the in US, uh, you're good. using traffic light system I don't know. or not. I don't know, but I'm sure I it's haven't seen it on fantastic Pakistan, information. But it's, it's absolutely great. And uh, you might know, if not, that the, the traffic light system is uh, consists of three colors. Green is... Uh, uh, low uh, content. Mm-hmm. So, what are uh, what are the three things that we're looking for? Obviously, in this packaging is the salt content, the sugar content, and the saturated fat content. Okay. So, if you're not educated enough, you haven't got an idea of what these mean. So, you have to go by the traffic light system. Okay. So, green is low. Uh, amber is medium content, uh, medium high content of that uh, particular ingredient, and uh, the red is obviously high. Okay. So if you can, try to go for the green and the amber uh, the colors and okay. uh, try to avoid the red. Okay, but you so. don't always go shopping as a teen girl. Your mm-hmm, parents certainly not. go shopping for you, your guardians, and you did say educate them. But when you're on the go, when you have an option for your school lunch, you know, after sports practice, whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. give us some, some ideas of what I can grab, you know, if I'm a teenage girl, you know, are there specific fruit that I do a better job with, vegetables, what, what can we have as far as specific foods are concerned? Okay, before I give my own options, can I just say that um, with some of my teenage girls who I train with, I find it very useful to use these apps. You possibly have seen the advertisements for um, uh, for the UK version of uh, the smart food choices. Right, right. Yeah. So you can you can find apps there. They will tell you what are the good choices. And the, the particular good one is the uh, Kerbo, which is going to tell you exactly whether or not that food is a good choice before or after practice. If, if I just want to say a quick example here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's say um, you're asking the, uh, your application whether uh, an orange and a protein bar would be a great choice for, before practice. Your application will have a live content, a live feedback via messaging saying that the orange is great, green light, they're using the traffic light system as well, right, green right. light, but your protein bar is high on sugar, so try to replace it with a handful of almonds. Right, right, and that's and, really cool. And you get the energy you need. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, but I do have at least one parent whom I spoke to whose daughter doesn't have a device. And so what I want okay. to do is I want to know what you think. 
I believe that with all meals and snacks, we should add some um, good um, protein and good fats to okay. that snack and meal. So it can be that you get a high glycemic index food, which is uh, which means that on that one one to hundred scale, it unfortunately falls seventy and above. So it's a high glycemic index food uh, like an orange or a banana. Okay, but to bring that down to a medium level where it doesn't elevate your blood sugar level as high as the high glycemic index would do okay. because that's the, that's what it does you have add some you add some fats or okay. protein and fats okay. so that would be the almonds almond butter coconut butter uh, that would be a half avocado so let's say a quick snack which okay. usually not um, in the household but um, absolutely fantastic in terms of giving you everything you need for that energy and uh, just before practice is uh, a slice of whole grain bread uh, with some avocado and smoked salmon salmon okay. so it has everything that you need but if you you thinking about uh, between main meals having a snack yes then um, an apple a banana or uh, two um, two apricots uh, with some nuts yes are a really good choice and yeah really good op- I tend to find when I visit for example suburbia USA that what you eat or what you find in the supermarkets might it's be quite, quite different. different to what you mm-hmm. eat in London so what you said earlier about knowing what's best for a burger, knowing about the best ways to have a pizza, uh, the girls might take that advice on board because they might not get smoked salmon or avocado or something like that. But they just might make sure instead of getting a McDonald's burger, sorry, McDonald's, they make sure that they're having the healthy burger that is properly meat you know, and so forth and so on. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I think that's fantastic news. And I want to talk about weight management. This is sort of the bugbear of being a teenager. And I want you to talk a little bit about, of course, the difference in being um, sort of thin and the difference in being healthy, but the importance of managing your weight. But I've, I've already told girls that Judith says, yo-yo dieting is over (laughs) so talk to them a little bit about how how to manage this Mm -hmm. spot on so yo-yo dieting and weight cycling is not the best way forward for sure and um, being thin, as you know, Sonja, doesn't mean that you are healthy. That's right. So I have uh, taken several BMI measurements and body fat measurements of teenage girls where the BMI was high, 30 and over, which would mean for any anyone over 18 anyway, would mean that they are obese and overweight. Okay. So these girls are thin, model-like look, and yet they don't have any muscle mass on them. It's, uh, they purely have uh, the body fat only. And clearly that's not uh, exactly the, the healthiest. Yes. That said, I, I put it out there, that there are girls who naturally, obviously, in, inherited this slim look. Yes. But they have muscle mass and tone to them. So not everyone uh, falls into that uh, category. Um so just to to come back to your question, yes, yes. so yo-yo dieting um, yeah. in itself. So there is not enough research out there, unfortunately, to yes. say that is really harmful. However, there is research about showing that yo-yo dieting is uh, psychologically harmful. Yes. So the weight you lost, which is in a small cycle, usually it's five, ten, ten pounds that people are uh, losing. That's what they have huff and puff for and after that they obviously start to start to go back to the old ways of yes, eating yes. unfortunately they regain that um, that uh, weight very yeah. quickly even quicker than they lost it yes yes so, so the advice with that ladies uh, that you're supposed to be eating regularly yes your um, calorie needs are high so you're supposed to be eating like a pregnant woman literally <laughs> so five six times a day three main meals and at least two snacks in between dieting and cutting out food groups from your diet will lead to deficiencies and that's and iron is the big one yeah i think that's really good advice because I think what you're saying bringing it full circle is that you have to change your Mm -hmm. lifestyle if you want to see sustainable sort of change if you don't change your lifestyle you do more psychological damage and 
to yourself and you have to sort of start all over again. But it's a lifestyle change. Would you say that's correct? Absolutely. And it's a long-term thing. Uh, so you have to be in it long-term. And I must uh, stress that it doesn't happen at once. No, it is no, happening I over know. time. But the good thing is, the change you make will contribute to the big picture. And you just start to feel much better about yourself. And it, it reflects, you radiate this this joy, this confidence, which will obviously others pick up as well. So the girls yeah. in your group, they might don't know what you're doing because I think some... Uh, the peer pressure you try to hide away your little uh, zip ziplock bags in your bag or that you have taken water with orange slices in it and you know most people would find that peculiar yeah peer pressure that is a big deal in the um life of a, of a teen girl as i said i heard the story or read something this morning about a lady who's 104 years old and she was asked what is the best thing about being 104 and she said no peer pressure and i thought oh dear i don't want to have to wait that long but that's a big thing for teenage girls at this point i have to ask you about fizzy drinks we call them soft drinks in the u.s teen girls drink a lot of, of soft drinks I was knocking back colas myself like it was water for years. It took me a long time to understand how unhealthy this habit was for me. Tell me a little bit about what you think about soft drinks and why they're bad for your lifestyle. Well, they are very tasty, for sure. Yes. For one. <laughs> and I can't blame uh, blame you girls that, uh, that you're going for it time to time. However, you need to know that um, the sugar content of these drinks are very high. Mm. They contain preservatives that are actually causing hormonal imbalances. Oh, wow. So it's not enough that your hormones are all over the place anyway. Uh -huh. So as puberty hits in, really the hormones are all over the place, you know, your mood swings are all over the place. So fizzy drinks are actually making these mood swings even worse. Uh, and the sugar content, I know that there are many zero sugar um, drinks out there, but the sweetener is, is uh, not a better option, wow. not at all. Wow. So just to tell you an example, actually I have read uh, something a couple of days ago. Um, that uh, 500 milliliter l original leucosate contains 62 grams of sugar, which uh. is equivalent to uh. 16 teaspoons of uh. sugar. Oh but God. if you want to translate that into teenage language, that's two snicker bars. Oh. So basically, having having just that drink, you had two snicker bars. Oh goodness down and to be honest that's uh, everyone's limit there i think yeah yeah uh, so that would really be more than enough sugar for a day that is that's amazing and on that note i want to move into exercise because i want to talk about energy and the importance of this balance between exercise and nutrition sports have become a big part of the teen experience girls are playing all sorts of sports but i want to talk about is this enough to keep fit you know once you get the food part right to keep you energetic? Teenage girls are um, uh, advised to exercise, uh, moderate to high intensity exercise, one hour a day. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't really happen unless you are in a sports school, but most of the schools, unfortunately, I don't know about the US, but in the UK, they don't cater for this. P sessions are um, very low intensity and it, um, it yeah. really focuses on cricket. Yeah, or, we, or we, we have... And I'm sure they still do. It's been a long time since I was a teenager. We have PE, you know, especially when you're a teenage girl. And I have to say that's something that I was going to talk about a little bit later, but I'll throw it in. I hated it. So for girls who are not athletes, for girls who are not, you know, playing softball and soccer and all of this stuff. And these days, it seems like so many girls are into sports. So they're getting what they need. But for the girls who are not interested in sports, what can they do to get that? I think you said an hour. Mm -hmm. What can they do? And that's moderate to, to high to intensity. Get that, so you ladies, yeah. you have to sweat for it. Yeah, what, what, can, really. what can they do? <laughs> if you try them and it doesn't suit you, you think that you know, you, you're know you dropping the ball all the time and you can't catch it. Yeah, and yeah. Your hand-eye coordination is just not there. Yeah. Then maybe that's you need me. to take on some <laughs> some dancing lessons. Yeah. So really oh, have great. to shake the booty. And that's... That's the oh, ultimate. So, uh, so when I was a teenager, I was a cheerleader. So I was getting my 
my hour in. It's all out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I was getting it because that's gymnastic. That's that's amazing because I thought that you would say that they they've got to do some specific sport. But I do want to know from you, Judah, if you've got any hot tips for teenage girls, or maybe you just want to sum it up for them on what's key to keep the balance for diet, um, staying fit. And you mentioned the importance of getting enough sleep. What do you want to say to girls? Uh, girls try to sleep eight and a half, nine hours. So doesn't matter what that has to be in. Try to eat regularly. Don't skip breakfast. For Can I just interrupt you? I'm nobody. sorry, you were on such a beautiful flow, but I do want to say this eight and a half to nine hours of sleep does mean sometimes going to bed earlier. It doesn't mean that you can sleep all day on, you know, Saturday or even on Monday when you're supposed Absolutely. to be in school. You can't, you can't make up for it, by the way. Okay. There's no such a thing. That's great. So it has to be regulated Monday to Friday as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, my uh, practical advice would be if you are the type who is going to sleep at 11, 11.30, just for a week, try this. Try to go to sleep 15 minutes earlier every day and see whether you can fall asleep around 10 o'clock. So 10 mm-hmm. till... 10 till 6 37 o'clock sleep yes. would be the idol perfect i think that it's important for me to say that the body that you have now serves you now mm. so what you do now and the space you're in now is very important because it is that body that makes you the star athlete that does whatever you need to to do Absolutely. you know that gets you the best sort of marks in school and so forth and so on that gives you good relationships it's that body but it's that same body that has to serve you later in life so i want you to talk to our girls about what what this means and that is so important sonja i'm so glad that we came back to this because my motto for for the last 15 years was your body is your temple look after it so what you're putting into your body now will affect how you're going to uh, feel and be in 15 years time it will affect all your performances regardless whether it's at school at home um, or at private practice so indeed eat healthily or at least try to eat 80% of times the best possible food, the best ingredients possible. Make smart food choices. If you don't know what the right food choice is, uh, please look it up and just be in the known that this will pay off long term and you will have less health problems. And just look at the adults around you. you. You can be sure that they will all struggle with something later in life that they haven't addressed as teenagers. Yes. So the choices you make now will influence your future. Ah, beautifully said, Judith. Girls, listen. I wished I had. Thank you, Judith, for great Pleasure. tips and advice. Um, lots of food for thought. Thank you so much for being with us. That is a wrap for UIO. Thank you, girls, for listening. And thank you, God, for the opportunity to do the show. My prayer today is that girls everywhere will enjoy happier, healthier teenage years through changing the way they view food and exercise. Also, I pray that these new views will lead to new habits for shaping new lifestyles and that girls will have the physical and mental capacity to make these changes. And finally, that each and every girl will have the balanced support she needs from the adults in her life for everlasting change. These blessings I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tune in in two weeks for some straight talk on skin. I'll be hanging out with the fabulous Jenny Hawkins, who owns the Skin Retreat in Fulham, London. How cool is that? Join me then. Until then, hit me up on Twitter at Sandra Lewis. That's my handle. Snapchat, Instagram, on thisandthat.co.uk forward slash UIO dash podcast or email info at sandralewis.com. Tell me what you want to hear about right here and send your questions for Jenny, who knows a thing or two about skin. Take care of you inside out and remember it is you I owe.